today. I'm going to look at race six from Hawthorne. A little bit of an interesting race. And this is Saturday, November the 27th. When I looked at the plot, first thing that kind of jumped out at me was the bunching up in quadrant one. And you can see, for the most part, we got a lot of circles. Um, really, one exception for both standard surface and distance is the number five. That's our favorite uh, pH factor. That's the morning line favorite. Now, you notice the run style of this horse. This horse needs the lead, an E-type. That means this horse does not run from behind. So this horse needs the lead. Now, you can see that he is going to be in the front based on the plot. The plot projects him to be in the front. He's all the way to the left, leftmost, and the rest of the runners there. The problem is, is the second call. He's below a couple horses here. Now, he still probably projects to the lead, but that tells me he may get more pressure, uh, and that could cause his undoing a little bit, or at least loosen him up uh, and, uh, you know, impact him late in the race. So what are we looking for here? Well, if you look at the 1, 2, 6, and 10, these are horses that all need to be up close. So they're going to be chasing this 5. So I would say those horses are probably going to be more vulnerable late. Um, you know, the five has the best finish. You can see the square. So the, the thing is, is yeah, they may put some pressure on mid-race, but it's going to hurt them too. So um, I'm kind of looking, first of all, at the P's, the seven and the nine. You can see the nine on uh, surface distance is a square. And this horse is shown in his, when you, if you look at his PP's, He's shown he can sit like third, fourth, and pick horses up and pass horses. So that's very important in this race. So um, he's he's the one horse out of the E, E, P's, and P's that can really pass horses. Uh, the others are kind of suspect in that regard. So very contentious, and you can see the flame, the early pace. Uh, not anticipating um, overly, but a pretty fast pace, too. So that's going to compromise some of those, you know, E, P types and maybe make the the five, who's the favorite, a little bit vulnerable late. And we're going to go into the form of the five, and I'll show you something that concerns me with him, too. So that kind of leads us to the nine as our, you know, presser, maybe be picking up some pieces, and then the late horse, the late pace horses. And the two that stand out on the plot from a late pace perspective, because they're squares, are three, who's a big, big uh, square in quadrant four, but he's way down there, and the eight, Diamond Dave. And if you look at Again, uh, if you look at quad percentage, and what this does is just basically tells you for this track profile, uh, based on the horse's you know shape and size, where they kind of uh, sit in terms of win percentage. Okay, so if you look, um, the five plots very well as being a square in quadrant one. Uh, the eight two uh, plots well. You can see that all all his bars are above the line. Above the line is positive, below the line is negative. Kind of in the middle is neutral. Uh, the nine, um, I mean, sorry, the three, a little bit below. But again, I think this pace dynamic and the size of the square is going to make him factor. So uh, I think just based on the plot, uh, the five looks the best at the early speeds, but could be vulnerable. The nine looks the best as the pressers, and then you got the three and eight closer. So you can kind of build your tickets around there. One other thing I do, do want to point out, though, uh, in the, on the past performance is the number five. Okay. Now, you know, this horse has been running good numbers and all the rest, but just want to just be aware of one thing here. When you look at this horse's races, he's been running either on turf, synthetic, or off the turf or off the synthetic. And um, so if you just look at races where he's run on the dirt, just the D. Now, they were early in his career and they were sprinting, so maybe that's not what he wanted to do and all the rest, but still, and they were against better. But still, poor performances on just a straight dirt race. Because you got to remember, when you have these turf races um, and, and they come off, the field's really a lot of grass horses a lot of times. And so they're not the strongest of fields, so it's something to watch. And you can see he's kind of dominated. And, and when you see O, O gives you the horses that are off the races that are off the turf. Now, in this case, even the races that came off the turf, with the exception of the Hawthorne race and the Gulfstream race, um, they were on synthetic. But you can see this horse thrives on this kind of situation. So has he really built up himself on races that, 
you know, could be suspect. It's just something to watch. I mean, he fits on numbers. He fits on class. You know, he's got that square and quadrant one. But, again, another thing where you're looking at maybe differentiating and don't want to take too short of a price, okay? Um, so, again, if he, like I just said, I want to just go back to the nine because I talked about a little bit about him being able to pass horses and stalk. So, what I like to do is sometimes just look at the horse's first and second finishes to get an idea what you know what's the run style this horse um employs to run best you can see he's got that he can come from a little bit even further out of it um but he's a horse that could uh, obviously stalk and finish so uh, he's a horse that's obviously a contender in here and then you know the three and the eight we've talked about it so for me it's like five maybe a little soft uh don't don't mind using maybe in some tries and supers but uh, nine three and eight here are interesting based on the plot analysis.